Hello, welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 29 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about all the mathematical functions that are available in SQL Server. We'll be looking at all these functions that you can see on the slide. Now, in order to find out what are the different functions that are available in SQL Server, go into Object Explorer window, expand databases, within databases expand any database let's expand sample and within the sample database folder expand programmability and then functions folder within functions folder expand system functions and finally look for mathematical functions folder expand that you should see all the mathematical functions that are available in SQL Server today we will examine a few of them that are commonly used okay We'll look at this absolute function, ABS, which stands for absolute. This function returns the absolute number. When we say absolute, the positive number. Now, whatever you pass to this function, let's say here, if you look at the example that we have here, we are passing in a negative value, okay, which has got a minus sign as well. Now, when you pass that to absolute function, it returns an absolute number, ignoring the sign. So we get 101.5 without that minus sign. So that's what basically the absolute function does, which is very simple to understand. It has got just one parameter. All right. The next two you know, useful functions are ceiling and floor. Okay. Now, if you look at these functions, they just take one parameter. Okay. Now, let's look at the example first. If you look at the ceiling example here, uh, the first query to the ceiling function we are actually passing 15.2 so what is the next highest value of 15.2 it's 16 so ceiling returns 16 so if you're passing a decimal number ceiling will return the next highest value okay uh, ceiling is the higher one you know ceiling is on the top and roof is on the floor maybe those are the reasons why uh, you know ceiling returns the highest number and floor returns the lowest number so if you look at this floor of 15.2 returns 15 okay now if you if you pass a negative number look at this for ceiling we are passing 15.2 now since it is a negative number minus 15 is greater than minus 16 so ceiling of a negative number will give minus 15 because minus 15 is greater than minus 16 okay but whereas when you look at the floor minus 15.2 returns 16 why because 16 is much lesser than I mean 16 is lesser than minus 15 okay so basically ceiling and floor returns the next highest integer value Okay, so if you look at the definition here, ceiling and function floors, I mean floor functions, accept a numeric expression as a single parameter. Ceiling returns the smallest integer value greater than or equal to the parameter, whereas floor returns the largest integer less than or equal to the parameter. Okay, the next function is the power function. Okay, now basically as the name suggests, the power function returns the power of a number. If you look at the example here, power of 2 comma 3 so in this function this function takes two parameters the first parameter the expression will act as the base whereas the second parameter will act as the power so if I pass 2 3 2 comma 3 to this power function we are saying calculate 2 to the power of 3 2 to the power of 3 is 8 so this function returns 8 so similarly if I pass 4 comma 3 we want to calculate 4 to the power of 3 4 and 4 and 4 which is 64 4 4 16 16 4 64 all right the next function is the square function again which is very simple and straightforward square function returns the square of a number so if I pass for example 3 3 into 3 is 9 so we get 9 back which is simple and straightforward okay um, and we have another function square root again which is very straightforward um, you know if you give a number it will calculate the square root of that given number so here we are passing 81 to this function it returns 9 by the way square root has this abbreviation sqrt is the name of the function we don't call it as square root but sqrt stands for square root okay so the next useful function that we'll look at is the random function rand function okay so as the name says rand random it gives a random number between 0 and 1 okay so it actually gives us a decimal number let's look at that first 
okay now I'm not going to execute all these queries that we have seen because they're pretty straightforward you can just understand them and you can run them in SQL Server Management Studio so let's start with random function so if you look at random function when I say select random look at the IntelliSense in SQL Server Management Studio this is expecting an integer parameter you know seed value now that is optional so if you look at the documentation in MSDN random of seed value seed value parameter is within the square bracket so anything within square brackets is optional according to the MS docu MSDN documentation so we don't have to supply a value for the seed value parameter okay so if we don't supply a value for seed parameter and I execute this function look at this I get a random number between 0 and 1 this will never cross 1 so when I keep I, I execute it multiple times look at the value it it gets changed every time I execute and this value is between 0 and 1 and if you look at the way I'm calling this function I'm not passing it any parameter now on the other hand if I pass a seed value so let's say I'm passing in seed value and let me execute this I executed this I got some 713 I execute that again look at that I get the same number it doesn't change so if you supply a seed value and execute that query no matter how many times you execute that you end up getting the same value okay so if you want to use rand, um, rand function and want to get the same value you use the same seed value if you don't provide a seed value then it gives you a random number every time a, you execute between 0 and 1 okay so the next question is let's say I want to print um, you know a random number between 0 and 100 how do I do that I can make use of the floor and rand functions because look at this every time I execute random function what do I get I get some random number okay but my requirement here is to generate a random number between 1 and 100 and to do that if I multiply this whatever is returned by random number if I multiply that with 100 and if I select the whole thing look at what's gonna happen so I execute this look at this I get 34 point something I execute that again 21 point something but I don't want the decimal part I only want the you know the integer part how do I do that maybe you can use ceiling or floor methods just to get you know the integral parts the next integer okay so I'm gonna use the floor function maybe here so it's gonna knock off those decimal places and give me the integer so when I execute that I get 79 I execute again 50 so if you keep on executing that you get different number but it will always be between 1 and 100 okay between 0 and 100 rather alright now let's say I want to print 10 random numbers between 1 and 100 you know if you want to print just put that in a loop so what are we doing here we are creating a variable called counter of type integer and then we are initializing that to 1 and we are checking okay is the counter value less than or equal to 10 so if it is then we are we are having the same statement here but instead of select we are saying print print the value and increment the counter value if you don't have this line this loop will become a never-ending loop okay so obviously now when we execute this you should see you know 10 random numbers between 1 and 100 I execute that again you know you get a different set of 10 random numbers between 1 and 100 now let's say I want 10 random numbers between 1 and 1000 is it possible absolutely just multiply this by 1000 and you should get 10 random numbers between 1 and 1000 okay so that's about rand function so remember rand function returns a random float number between 0 and 1 random function takes an optional seed parameter when the seed value is supplied the rand function always returns the same value for the same seed okay if you want to generate a random number between 1 and 100 we have seen how to do that and we also have seen how to print 10 random numbers between 1 and 100 the final function that we will look at today is round this is very very important function and I believe every developer would have used this at least one or two times in their life in any project alright so let's see what's the significance of this round function round function as the name suggests it rounds the number 
okay now if I give it a decimal number you can tell it okay round it to two places or three places now if you look at this function it has got three parameters now rather than reading the description of these parameters um, let's try to understand the role of these parameters with the help of practical examples okay so if you look at the examples on the screen you know the first this function look at this the first parameter is the number that I want to round. Actually, let's look at the second para second example first. So the first parameter is the number that I want to round, okay? And the second parameter will tell, okay, you want to round this first number, but how of you know how many decimal places do you want to round that number to? Okay, so I want to round this number to two decimal places. That you that's what you are telling. Okay, so this number is 850.556 and you are saying I want to round this to two decimal places with the help of the second parameter. Okay, so obviously what happens, this will be rounded to 85. Actually, I am, we, are pick, we picked the wrong example. Okay, now let's look at, you know, the first example itself because you know we need to understand the role of this last parameter which is nothing but the function parameter uh, and this parameter is optional if you look at the first example we haven't supplied you know three parameter the third parameter there we are supplying it only here now actually round function you know it does two things it either rounds the given number or it truncates the given number now whether you want to round a given number or truncate a given number is controlled by this third parameter so if you specify, you know, one as the third parameter, then you're telling the round function, don't round it, truncate it. Truncate it to two decimal places. So anything after two decimal places, just ignore that. So it's saying truncate this 850.556 to two decimal places. So what it does is it converts this, it ignores this 6 and converts that to 0. So that's why we get 850.550. On the other hand, if you look at the first example, here we are not using that, um, you know, the function parameter, the third parameter. So if you don't use that, the default is 0, which means when you specify a value of 0, or if you don't specify any value at all, which is where the default is 0, then the function actually rounds the value. So you're telling it to round to two decimal places. Since we have six here, so obviously it will round this number to 850.560, which is what this one will return. I hope this makes clear. You know, the first parameter is the number that we want to round to. The second parameter is the length of the rounding. How many decimal places do you want to round to? And the third parameter is the function parameter, um, which you use to decide whether you want to round the number or truncate the number. A value of zero indicates that you want to round it, and the default, if you don't specify, is zero. A non-zero value could be one, could be 99. A non-zero value indicates that you want to truncate the number and not round it. Okay, now if you look at the second exam, I mean the third example here, you are saying, okay, round it to one decimal place. So obviously 0.556, you know, 56. So these two will be rounded to 0 0.600, which is 850.600. Okay, now look at the fifth, I mean the fourth example here, obviously you are saying, truncated to one decimal place. So what happens to five and six, they will be truncated, okay, after the decimal place. So that's why it says 850.500, okay? And the fifth example here, if you look at this one, look at this, for the length parameter, this is important and interesting. For the length parameter, I'm saying I'm providing a negative value. So when you provide a negative value, you are asking the round function to round, you know, the numbers or the digits left to the decimal point. Okay, so you're telling it, you're telling this round function to round, to round these two places, five zero, round these two numbers that are to the left of the decimal point. So what's going to happen? Five zero will be rounded to nine hundred, so nine hundred point zero zero zero. 
okay so when you specify a negative number you are actually telling the round function to round the digits to the left of the decimal point when you use a positive number you tell you're telling it to round the digits that are right to the decimal point okay so this round function you know there's almost anything that you can achieve either rounding or truncation with the help of these three parameters okay and finally the last example if you look at it you are saying it round the last I mean one digit to the left of the decimal place okay so obviously it returns 850.000 because 0 and it's 5 so it just rounds that to 0 anyways so we get 85.850.000 alright on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.